Let me move forward only out of uh, both respect and fairness, but what if Dr. Ornish was the only one who had ever documented that coronary artery disease, number one killer in America, number one threat to people in this room right now? Um, I'll get to that in a minute, that uh, people listening, people in the room uh, might assume they don't have heart disease. I would not assume that, not to be Debbie Downer. Talk to you in a minute about how you know. But if it was only Dr. Ornish that showed this, there might be some skepticism. It's California. Everything in California is odd. It's not translatable to uh, Dakota and uh, Ohio and, uh, and other places. So in a very interesting story, I'll just tell this because it is interesting. Dr. Esselstyn, uh, he's now 83 years old. He's a professor of surgery at the Cleveland Clinic. He's married to a wonderful woman named Ann Kryle Esselstyn. Her grandfather started the Cleveland Clinic, so Dr. Esselstyn was legacy there. He was a surgeon of breast and thyroid disease. And he, he, for one year, they were redoing, this is in the uh, early 80s, they were redoing the surgical locker room at the Cleveland Clinic. And he got thrown together with another surgeon. He had to put his gym shoes next to another surgeon's gym shoes. And that was Dr. Rene Favalero, because Dr. Esselstyn was an E, Dr. Favalero was F-A, and they just did it alphabetically. Well, Dr. Favalero was the first surgeon in the world to perform bypass surgery on the heart. And they would chat and they would talk and come at the end of the day and compare notes. And they both realized that they really hadn't done anything to prevent disease. Well, Dr. Favalero kept doing a great job of operating and moved back to Argentina, kept operating. But Dr. Esselstyn, God bless him, started finding this data about Morrison and Kempner and uh, Pritikin. And, you know, he was just fascinated. He's a very bright man. And he designed a study at the Cleveland Clinic in the, in the mid-'80s, unaware of Dr. Ornish, where he would just go to the cardiologist, if you've got the worst patients, you can't bypass them, you can't stent them, let my wife and I cook for them, let, let us meet with them, let us try and teach them. We'll do it with our own money and our own time, we're just passionate about it. But he started to collect data. Uh, he didn't have the Enron Corporation or whatever to fund you know, fancy um, uh, aspects of the study, but it was real. So again, he paid close attention to the, this kind of data. And he concluded after studying natural populations that are reported to have very little or no heart disease, including Japan and others, that they would emphasize whole food, plant-based diets. And Dr. Esselstyn is probably the biggest proponent um, on the scene of uh, avoiding all animal products, including all added oils. Um, very low fat diet. The standard American diet is somewhere in the range of 40% calories from fat. Some people eat more than that. Some people advocate more than that. This is more characteristic of what may be called an Okinawan diet, which in the 40s was the center of probably the longest lived, healthiest people in the world. It's all changed now, thanks to KFC and Arby's and McDonald's and such. But anyways, a diet that more mimicked uh, natural populations that had essentially no heart disease. Uh, there wasn't meditation, there wasn't anything else. It was mainly a dietary program. A lot of social support. They would actually go over Dr. Esselstyn's house and they would do little cooking sessions. So before patients engaged in this program, they had had 49 events, meaning they had gone to the emergency room or had a heart attack or had a stent or had a bypass. And then in those that were willing to follow his program with his wife, Ann, they actually very quickly stopped having those events. In fact, had none of them. Small study, there wasn't a control group. Uh, there was just this historical fact that they were sick people. I've met some of them. They were people that couldn't walk to the mailbox because of blocked arteries in their legs and leg pain. They were having terrible heart trouble um, and uh, sexual dysfunction. And they are about as honest as people are about what kind of improvement they had. One of the powerhouses of uh, Dr. Esselstyn's program is some of these people needed to have heart angiograms before and after and even though it wasn't built in the program like Dr. Ornish this is an angiogram in 1996 and a angiogram repeated uh, two and a half three years later on a segment of heart arteries called the LAD or left anterior descending artery and a previously badly narrowed long segment that really couldn't be treated with a balloon at the time because of its long nature had completely reversed. Happened to be a general surgeon who was very incapacitated by chest pain and the uh, post image he had completely resolved was back to work and very productive. Uh, a little less obvious maybe to the untrained eye, but 1987 on a bend in an artery on your right, excuse me, on your left, 
with an arrow was a narrowed artery called the right corn artery. And five years later, at least from my trained eye, that looks uh, on your right to be essentially normal. We never see this in cardiology. I mean, these pictures have been shown now thousands of times because they're so unusual, so dramatic. And um, it's not coincidence. When you repeat somebody's catheterization, it's either the same or it's worse. It's never better like this unless you do something rather radical, like recognize the power of food. So again, all that data uh, leads to the idea that this is really not a one-way street. This is uh, a two-way street, thank goodness, that we can go from fatty streaks on to clinically serious lesions, but we can go from clinically serious lesions back up the uh, pathway, at least to a point where, I mean, there's no real, there's one documented case of complete reversal of disease. I'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, otherwise, we don't really anticipate, we don't have Drano, we aren't completely resolving decades of atherosclerosis in five years or one year. But even small changes in uh, narrowings lead to a major improvement in blood flow, people feel better. And I mentioned now a few times this magical wallpaper lining of artery called your endothelium. And when you stop bombarding your arteries, certainly by smoking with toxins, by animal saturated fat like you're going to find in cheese, eggs and butter and meat products, um, and leading as clean a life as you can now that we have chemicals everywhere probably add to the conundrum. But if you can keep your endothelium healthy, uh, you can also develop a very resistant artery, 50,000 miles of arteries resistant to strokes and heart attacks, even if they have plaque. So you may have some disease left in your arteries, but if that wallpaper is like Teflon, if nothing will stick to it, whoever brought me water, that was amazing water because I have not coughed once. Since I'm, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I appreciate it. It's like miracle water. You should bottle that Orlando miracle water. <laughs> we can make some money. I don't know what the pH is, but it certainly stopped my cough. Thank you very much. Every time I speak, I cough. I did my bar mitzvah at age 13, I coughed. So <laughs> not nervous. Don't know what it is. Somebody help me with that. All right. Always fun to have a little fun. Um, we have to have a few new heroes, and I am going to tell you, we're going to get off the food topic, but um, we got, you know, this entire compendium, the biggest criticism of everything that is truly a miracle, that you can, you can give a patient a copy of a DVD called Forks Over Knives, and they have everything they need to correct their heart disease if they'll just listen to it, enact it, maybe get, a, you know, a few skills, get themselves a a Nutribullet and a crock pot and a, you know, a few things. But you know, that is all you need to potentially reverse decades of heart disease, many cases of adult diabetes. And again, I, giving that uh, documentary a plug, I have no financial ties, I didn't make it. Um, although I do have an article on their website this week about one of my patients who 30 days watched that video and we repeated his blood work before and after watching that video and the changes he made, dramatic, amazing improvements in advanced panels of his inflammation, cholesterol and such. Very powerful and great example. But this whole compendium of the ability to take America's number one killer, the world's number one killer, and tame it and potentially prevent it, and for those that are suffering from it, reverse it with very low cost, very accessible lifestyle therapy, largely based on food. Food that is now, you know, very available. Rice and beans, inexpensive. We still don't have that many heroes. We don't have that much data. So anytime we get more data, we got to throw it in the mix. So many people have heard of Dr. Joel Furman, Eat to Live, and many other books. He's been advocating this sort of food plate, vegetables, beans, fruits, whole grains. But the purple section is where he might be a little different than what Dr. Ornish, Dr. Morrison, Dr. Esselstyn set up their studies long ago, decades ago, in that um, he felt that seeds and nuts were whole foods, were rich in minerals and polyphenols and uh, forms of fat that were not animal-based and uh, not saturated fat, and was advocating that we not shy away from seeds and nuts. And if we had him on a panel, he'd have to sit over here, and Dr. Ornish, and I don't think there's ever been a panel where all of them have sat together. Um, but he put together a program, and it all kind of was there. I was aware of it. You may be aware of it. It was a wonderful program that many people have benefited from uh, by um, you know, watching his PBS shows and reading his books and all. 
but he published data. And when you publish data, you get accolades uh, because we can now present it in meetings. So this was late 2015, American Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. If you look at uh, blood pressure, systolic before and after, 443 examples. Blood pressure dropped by more than 25 points. That is as good as any prescription drug, maybe two prescription drugs. And diastolic blood pressure dropped on average by 15 points. But that wasn't with drug, that with converting to what Dr. Furman will call a nutritarian approach. You know, um, health equals nutrients over calories, looking for foods that are very nutrient dense. It's a nice way of also describing fruits and vegetables and legumes and whole grains and nuts and seeds. Um, a program that's, you know, largely plant-based. Uh, there's a little room in Dr. Furman's pyramid for some occasional animal products, a very small percentage of calories. Uh, when weight loss was looked at, um, if you look at, um, you know, over 30 would be technically a BMI over 30 are called obese. That at the end of three years was a 55 pound weight loss in those that were beginning the program at the highest weights and those that would fit a definition being overweight, BMI of 25 to 30, 310 patients. They lost on average and sustained on average a weight loss of about 14 pounds. As we all know, it's easy to construct any program to lose weight for 10 days. You can do the Jello diet, you can do the Slurpee diet, whatever you want. 10 days doesn't cut it in the world of you know, true health, uh, but three years is a pretty good measure and pretty impressive data. And then again, LDL and cholesterol triglycerides, before and after, uh, no medication falling from 171 to 128, and triglycerides falling from 205 to 126 and such. He did in this paper publish about 10 case studies of cardiac patients that seemed very similar to the kind of patients Dr. Ornish and Dr. Esselstyn were studied, people with previous bypass, a lot of disease, not a lot of options in treatment and documented major improvements in their status. So I think we can add to the world of cardiac disease and cardiac reversal, um, Dr. Furman's slight variant on this whole theme of whole food, plant-based, low oil, low added oil, uh, uh, and now recognize, and he seems to have swayed them. I, this is really minutia for anybody who follows it, but Dr. Ornish has added a small amount of nuts to his program as of this year, and it's even rumored Dr. Esselstyn has too. So. The whole world's coming together and joy over all this.